There we go. You're live. All right. Hey, guys. How you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter and the always beautiful Mrs. Honeydew Carpenter. Mm. Uh. And this is our Saturday morning live show, and we aptly named it Goodbye Air Treat Shop. Because the shop that I built out of Air Treat <clears throat> that is world famous now with millions of views, uh, Grandma and Grandpa sold the place, and they're going to be closing here in a couple of weeks. And so whenever we do workshops and whatnot in the area, we haven't been able to do them this year because of COVID-19, but whenever we do them, we're not going to have access to it anymore to have people tour it so we wanted to just do one last kind of tour we might walk around it even and even the whole backyard and the whole uh, deck and everything if you guys look back at some of our older videos it, it, if you're new and whatnot and we do have had several thousand new subscribers this month um, go back to some of our older videos and, and look at the old deck and the old backyard. It's completely different now. And the Aircrete shop and the Aircrete shed really just added to the whole thing. And it turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, we might even walk inside. I'll open the doors and go inside. And you can see some shots of the different Aircrete panels and stuff. Because it was a process when we were building this. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, Aircrete is uh, finicky stuff, and anybody who's tried it knows that. And uh, it took us a, a while to get the right mix and everything down. And so, do you want to go in for just a minute, babe? Yeah, go open it. Do you guys want to see the inside one last time? All right. Hey, the lighting actually is pretty good in here. I didn't even read the screen. Hey, yeah. there you go. So, well, Grandma's got her shelves and the bicycles hanging over, over there on that side of the shed. But uh, if, you, if you look at some of these first panels, like this one over beside the shelf, it was really, really, whoa, I about fell. You can see it was really aerated and whatnot. I mean, those were some of our first attempts at, at doing the aircrete. But the incredible thing is, guys, it's very forgiving. The aircrete is very forgiving. Because even the ones that were kind of soft and turned out light, you let them sit a season, over a season, and I mean, they're still, they're hard now, you know? And uh, so, um, we tried to do our best to come up with the best mix design. And what I found, guys, is some people have followed my mix design to a T, and they're still having a little trouble. A little trouble. And so I did some experiments and added citric acid to the water to up the pH level to a more acidic level. And yeah, it really hurts the aircrete and kills it. And so one thing that you guys can do if you're doing the mix design to a T and perfect measurements and still having problems is you can check your water source. Just go down to Walmart and get a $5 pH balance tester, and it'll tell you if your water is neutral or not. And if it falls on the acidic side, just a skosh, um, all you have to do is put a little baking soda in it, and it neutralizes it. And you may have to do some experiments with a gallon of water on the amount of baking soda to get to a neutral level for your water. And so that was just a quick tip. But, uh, yeah, by the time we got done and got ended, I mean, look at the gable ends and these panels over here. They're just absolutely beautiful. And the header over the door. And let me see. Okay, that's the gable end on the other end over there. But, see, this wall was one of the first walls. If you watched our videos and how the 
some of the panels aren't real consistent. <laughs> so back down we go. And hopefully Darwin didn't make any of you guys seasick with all that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> Mel Melanie doesn't ha have a real high, high regard in my filming skills. Oh, you do awesome, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so Beaver Creek Farm Life, thank you for everything you do. He put our email to Honeydew Carpenter One up there. And he put a link to our Etsy store, to Honeydew Carpenter Shop. And our website and our Teespring account. And you guys can check out the Teespring account and get a coffee mug or a t-shirt with our logo on it. And so thank you, everything, Alan. Uh, Jeff says, oh, cool, the shed. And Beaver Creek Farm Life made it awesomely easy. You can click on the large foamate and wand. And it'll take you right to our Etsy store with that actual item. So awesome. Thank you, Beaver Creek Farm Life. He also did it with the stucco mate. And Jeff Krupke, he says, I can't wait to see the details again. Oh, right. They, is it not 15 degrees cooler? In oh, shed? no. I was so happy to come in the shed because I was <laughs> that, like, that's so Guys, that is one of the physical properties of air treat that is absolutely incredible. Because here, it'll get, you know, 50, 55 degrees at night and the air treat will cool down and then at high noon when it's 90 degrees out which it was yesterday 93 or whatever in here it's 20 degrees cooler it's like 73 it's absolutely phenomenal uh, way to build um, we had a lot of fun um, using our foam mate and I would recommend this to anybody when when the people this house sold in three days. My goodness. And for this area, and it, it, it's a, actually a duplex, the backyard of a duplex. And it sold in three days, which is absolutely incredible for this area. And one of the biggest selling points was this shop back here. I remember when we were building it and the backyard was all ugly and the old deck. And people were like, Ow, how, why would I want a, a gray, ugly monstrosity like that in my backyard but mm -hmm. i'm telling you guys it mm -hmm. turned out mm -hmm. beautiful and i trimmed it all in white to match the deck and so yeah i would go get a foam mate and start experimenting and definitely test your water jeff says you can't wait to see the details again william craig says hi everyone hey william kenny bean says good morning from east washington hope all is well love the background shed that whole backyard with the deck pavers and the shed turned out great. It oh, really did turn out great. Oh, we the whole great. thing. Kenny's actually been here. Yeah. Um, Alan Ingo says, good morning from Parsons, Kate, Cass. Melanie says, yes. Sweet. So yeah, here. Turn oh, on. I'm turning it way too fast, you guys. Okay. I'm sorry. We'll give him a look out the door. Can you guys see that? At the Yeah, you can see the cobblestone walkway. And we have videos doing every part of this process, the cobblestone walkway and the whole bit. And how about the deck? If you guys look at some of our older videos and look at the old deck, look at that new deck. That's just, it really, the whole thing turned out awesome. So, and we're back. Woohoo, we're back. It's hot out there. It is hot <laughs> out there. You, it, know. you know what's funny, guys? Is what five days ago it snowed four inches i'm not lying or was it last week was it last saturday it um i don't remember was it snowing day. on our live i think it was yeah so it, it might have been seven days ago but that's idaho for you if you don't like the weather wait a few days and then it'll be a whole different we have a bunch of people saying yes Yes, and so Bill says, I love the videos and all the know-how you have shared. So it's one of my favorite sites I like to go to. Bill Rodriguez, thank you for saying that. That's so sweet. He says, morning, y'all. Good morning. Um, Melanie says, hello, my fellow Melanie. Melanie, you have an awesome name, just right. saying. <laughs> Uh, Carpenter Family says, hello from Northeastern PA. Well, hello. Melanie says, so love and appreciate you both. Aww. Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you, Melanie. And your husband has an awesome wife. 
Yeah. Or, he, he, your husband, he, his wife's name is awesome. That's it. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Kenny Bean says, would have been awesome for a recorded number of outside temp and inside temp. Would have been a great addition to showing people how well it really does next to seeing in person. You know what? It actually... That's a great idea. It, let's do that. It mm -hmm. closes... It, this doesn't close for, what, two and a half, three weeks? Yeah. So, maybe next weekend, what we'll do is we'll come out here and we'll do an outside temperature reading and... Uh, an inside temperature Yeah, so we'll reading. buy two thermometers, mm. stick one yeah. in here and one out there, and then there we go. I love that. You're so awesome. Kenny, great idea. Um, David says, hi, movie stars. <laughs> David, you're so awesome. Hi. Raymond Miller says, hey. Bobby says, hey. I mean, how do I figure out how far to turn which valves on the small foam mate? Oh, well, that's really easy. Um, you're going to have a much easier time controlling the density of your foam by using the regulator on your compressor. I run mine about 45 to 50 PSI, but I'm at a higher sea level than you might be. I'm at almost 5,000 feet. So you might need to run at a little bit higher pressure or a little bit lower pressure to get the right density. And getting them to get the equilibrium in the regulator bulb on the back of your wand is really easy. All you do is turn on the air first and depending on how fast you want to do it is how much air you want to do and you'll just experiment with that. So you turn on the air first and then you just introduce a little bit of fluid into it and it'll start making the foam and once it co starts coming out smoothly um, that's where you'll want to stop and if it if it's uh, too much air between the um, stuff coming out smooth you'll want to turn down the air a little bit so there's not an exact spot you just got to right. play there's, with it a little there's bit there's not an ex exact spot and a lot of it has to do with air pressure and barometric pressure and the elevation you're at and how you have your regulator set on your air compressor so good question very good question. And Jason says, hello. David Bennett says, got here late. We did get here late. <laughs> Us too. Uh, thank you for all of the great ideas. Thank you. That was sweet. David Bennett says, what did I miss? You missed a lot. Um, you're going to have to go back and watch it all. <laughs> uh, but Jason uh, just said it's discussion and talked about the shed. Right. We did. This is going to be one of our last lives here because it is sold. They close on it at the end of this month. Yeah. And so we won't have access to it anymore. In fact, it's the first part of the last week of this month that they close on it. And Tone, they close on the 30th. Oh. Okay. Antonio says, hello, love your videos. Can't wait to see what you came up with in the future. Well, um, I'm working on some really cool stuff. Um, I'm kind of focusing, because I got my start during doing um, homestead type stuff and rocket stoves and whatnot like that. And Aircrete was just something that I came up with as a medium to make rocket stoves. And then I mm -hmm. thought, whoa, I can make a whole building system with it. And that was really popular. But I really love alternative energy systems and stuff like that and so right now I'm working on a wind turbine and it is cool you guys are gonna absolutely love it and we just finished a water wheel and we're gonna go out <clears throat> and do a video the final stage of that video um, we're having a big kind of a party and a get-together and a barbecue out there uh, for that and so those are some of the things that we have coming, just all different alternative energy systems. So Gail says, morning, my bud. Summer is here. And so Nevada is 105 to 108 this less. That's hot. Whew. Tom says, need to move out of the shed. The Wi-Fi might be getting reduced because of the hardware cloth walls. Well, we have the door open. Yeah, let me know if you guys still 
continue mm-hmm. having trouble, okay, you guys? Um, Bobby says, how do I figure out what valve to open and how far to make good foam on, on a small, small foam, foam mate? Open the air first. Um, I just explained this to another gentleman. No, it was the same person. Oh, they was just, it? They asked this question again. Oh. Because... Th- there's a probably, delay. Yeah, there's a delay. There's a delay. Okay. So, Melanie An- Anderson says, so beautiful. You both are such an inspiration. Oh, Thank you, you so much. You are so sweet. Thank you, Melanie. Jason says, good morning from just south of San Francisco. Well, good morning. Christopher Meyer says, this is the first day I remembered about the live Saturdays. Was brushing my hound, but popped on here to check in. You had just started. Blessing and thanks. I'm glad you made it. Thank you. And have fun brushing your hound. Someone said, what? No more air creep? No, there's going to be a lot more air creep. Yes, just we Um, won't have access to this shed anymore. Yeah, we're looking at just the original air creep um, shed that I built for Grandma and Grandpa. They sold the property. And so um, there's going to be a lot more air creep. We're wanting to do some... Maybe a little bit bigger than this, uh, some cabins out of Aircrete on our property that we're looking at buying, um, just so people can have the opportunity to come to workshops and actually get to experience the environment inside an Aircrete uh, building and how you know well it works environmentally speaking. Right. So Christopher Meyer says, that's awesome. You just had snow. Yes, we had snow, and now it's ripping the 90s. It's yeah. crazy. That's Idaho for you. Yeah. Uh, Beaver Creek Farm Life says, you had talked about how you considered a one-piece AC roof. Can you describe how you would do that? Air Creek. Oh. Roof. Uh, a one-piece? Yeah. I think originally you left it open, it open so we could pour it. Oh, I did. Yeah, um, so it would be one solid. Yeah, I I left the um, ridge open on top. There's just a ridge cap over it, and you you I can pull that off and pour it with aircrete. We wanted to kind of experiment with it being hollow, and being a uh, self venting roof system. So because it is hollow, whenever it gets hot it actually pulls the hot air up and out the uh, vented ridge cap. And I actually did a whole video kind of explaining how that part of the thing worked. Um, I can't believe, I can't remember what that video was called, though. Right. But, yeah, but I did anyway. And so, um, I th- if I was ever to do it again, I would do a double space. So I would have the self-venting ridge cap with a hollow area so when the um, sun beats on the shingles and they get hot, air is always flowing up and out the ridge and through it and then have another uh, air creek layer underneath it. And that's how we're going to do all the rest of them. So they're going to have a complete air creek building with a vented roof system on it. Always and, and, and the, yeah, the way to do the panels for the roof would be just like you did the panels for the wall. And you would just lay them on the roof. That's right. Yeah. And then you would attach a plywood to the top of that with your studs. And then the next layer of plywood for your vented roof system. Yeah. How heavy are the panels? They weigh about 75 78 pounds. I always tell people between 75 and 80 pounds. Um, you know, and I mean, they're almost eight feet long and 16 inches wide. They ended up being like, I think, three or 3.2 cubic feet. So just to give you an idea, a cubic foot of cement or concrete weighs about 150 pounds, 145 to 155 pounds. And so that panel, if it were regular concrete would weigh like 500 pounds 450 pounds or something like that and they end up the density of my mix design ends up being about 25 pounds a cubic foot and so you end up with a 75 to 80 pound panel 
Um, and man, they're just awesome. Right. You, if you saw my stucco mate video, I took one of the ones, this last panel right here. Here, I'm going to move around the shed. So it's a little thinner because we came in from both directions and had to put a key panel in. Um, the one I had actually made for it first was about an inch too wide. <laughs> and so we had to remake it. Well, when I did my stucco mate video, I was just spraying that one with the stucco mate to um, give you guys, to show you how that worked. But before I did it, I hit that thing with a hammer. And I mean, if, if any of you watched that video, that just kind of give you a sense for how strong these panels are. Right. I wanted to show you guys too, over here, the difference between one of our first panels that we first started with. Yeah. And one of our final panels that we had finished with his final recipe before he felt comfortable putting it out. I mean, this panel still works and is great and good. It's still hard. But this one, it's beautiful. You see the difference? So, isn't that awesome? Hey, you look good on camera today. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, it must be because you did your hair. No, you, no, not, you know what I mean. She, she went to the hairdresser and had the highlights put in. It just does not look good, everybody. <laughs> Bill from Arlington, Washington, says he, that he loves our videos. Thank you. Uh, Christopher Myers, you're so awesome. What an amazing gift. He he just donated five dollars. Oh, thank you. Thank you, so you much. Christopher. That you're amazing. I want to try pouring garage foundation with Aircrete. I have a still building. Um, that that's fine, but you're gonna want to put a hard coat over it if you're gonna do anything that because Aircrete doesn't make a good wear surface. I mean, as hard as these panels are and as good as they work. I can still take like this knife or whatever, and, cut. and I can scratch. It. Yeah, you know? the inside does of this shed doesn't have a coating. We haven't put one on yet because we wanted to be able to show people. Right. Um. Um. But. But I the outside, you yeah, can't do that. With. I w back in the day when they did construction, they'd just do all in before sheetrock. They would do lath and plaster. I was just gonna plaster these. But I wanted to leave it open to show people the difference. And now it's sold. They can deal with plastering it. <laughs> Jeff says, I think this is a feature of building as you can make the panels ahead of time. So you can sell kits and make a shed and you can make care structures and then metal studs and air creep for the filler. Right? Right. And I did a whole video on that talking about um, tongue and groove interlocking panel systems that could be done just that exact way and uh you know i mean it'd take a factory and it, a lot of equipment to roll out those tongue and groove uh panel uh and whatnot but you know if somebody wanted to do that i think it would be worth it and i think it would be a good way to start a trend of way of building homes and so that's why we want to make some air creek cabins and put them on our property and give people an opportunity to come and visit and stay in them and and just and learn a little bit about how everything is put together and how how the physical properties of air creek and how it works the way it works right you know it just so evens out the environment in these um in the winter time when you heat it it gets super cold at night like below zero but the panels are, act as a battery and they hold the heat and and it doesn't it doesn't just go from hot cold hot cold just like that it's it, it's really cool it really is melanie gave us a thumbs up so thank you raymond says hello from smoky mountains andrews North, nc Bill says, hi from New Mexico. Hello. Melanie says, I'm thinking of building 
A paneled dome. That'd be awesome. That'd be a good way to do it. So you're going to do geodesic triangles and put them together. And that's one of the buildings that I want to do once we get our property. Grandma and Grandpa were so generous to trust me and Melanie enough with their backyard <laughs> to uh, to let us, you know, kind of tear it up and, and, and build an experimental structure, you know. And I promised him, you know, if it doesn't work and it's ugly or whatever, I'll tear it down, you know. <laughs> right. But they did. They let us. And so that's really um, cool. When we get our own property, we're going to do a geodesic dome. Uh, a couple more cabins like this and let people stay in them. Right. You know, have them plumbed and heated with uh, aircrete, um, you know, rocket stoves in them. And Luann says, be cool. Hello, Honeydew Cuties from Northern Michigan. Melanie says, Aircrete off grid solar paneled ice box for refrigeration. That would, could work. Um, Hi, thanks for the great info. Can I use panels for shed on raised wood foundation? Use... Oh! It's like, instead of a tent, canvas or something, they're going to use air creep walls, I guess? Because it's raised... They're doing a raised wood foundation. So that, a lot of people build sheds on raised wood. And... You absolutely could do that. It would actually be... I did it on a slab, and so I actually had to hilt it in to put my um, C-channel down that I set the panels in, and you would just be able to screw it right to your foundation. So, yeah, it would work just fine. You'd end up with a wood floor if you're doing a raised, you know, and we have a concrete floor, but... So we, we only have, like, three more minutes we're going to be on, you guys. Do you guys want to see the outside of the shed, or do you want us to stay in here real fast? Yeah, let's, let's do one walk around. Okay. So they can see the trim and how all that... Uh, Woo, it's out. bright now. Yeah. Okay, if we walk this way, we'll be going against the sun. Well, kind of. All right. You ready? Yeah. Can you guys see the shed? I hope so, because I can't see right now. This is the side back wall. Let me back away from it a little bit. Yeah. Can you guys see that? I got it. And the trim yep, they all can. ended up really nice. It's a tight squeeze back there. Can you guys see the one back there? Let's go around the other way. Oops. Uh, let me spin the camera really fast on you guys and see what happens. And then here's Darwin again. With the shed. Oh. Yeah, I'm not as good as Melanie on the camera. And then there's the deck. And the cobblestone patio. And Grandma has it all decorated with her yard furniture. So, all right. Do you want to take a, one or two last questions? Okay. And then... I think, sorry guys, out in the sun we can't even read the screen, so. Right. Have you all decided to do the Wood Burning Stove University? I want one. Right, we are going to do some more of those. Um, I, honestly, guys, it just depends on how things go. If we do do one, it's going to be in August. Um, and we're going to have to judge the climate of this whole COVID thing, uh, to determine whether 
we're going to put something out and have people from all over the country come into one spot. It's I absolutely love the shed design and I love all the videos you do. So glad to be following you. From uh, Arlington, Washington, we'll keep following. That is oh. awesome. Thank you, Bill Rodriguez. That's awesome. What a great comment. Steve says, I'm thinking of using air cream in a passive solar greenhouse. Oh, perfect application. With a tilapia tank. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. And in fact, that it doesn't rot is important. I know I will have to use reinforced concrete for strength. Right, yeah. yeah. There's going to be engineering wise, there's going to be areas where you'll use the reinforced stuff, but then where you want the insulation and the thermal battery and it to work in that capacity within your greenhouse to help regulate it, that's a perfect application for it. Melanie wants me to build her one, so I've done some extensive study on it. And we're actually going to um, dig a big trench all around a property with a backhoe and Run, run a pipe through it. I'm talking 8, 12 feet under the ground and then circulate air through the um, greenhouse from the underground thermal air. And even in the winter time, we should be able to, uh, you know, have it climate controlled. So it's going to be a fun deal. Fun, fun, fun. All right, you guys have a wonderful day and we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.